This video is going to be a quick introduction into eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Let's look at the definition. Let A be an n by n matrix. This means it's a square matrix. A number lambda, this is the Greek letter lambda, is said to be an eigenvalue of A. If there exists a non-zero solution vector K of the linear system that follows the following property. If we multiply matrix A by the vector K, we should get exactly the same result as if we multiply number lambda by vector K. And that solution vector K is the one that we call eigenvector, corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. To better understand this definition, let's look at the example. We're given matrix A that has the eigenvalue negative 4, and its corresponding eigenvector k. To demonstrate that these are the eigenvalue and eigenvector for the given matrix, we have to verify the definition. In other words, we have to take matrix A, multiply it by vector k. That result we have to compare with the product of lambda and vector k. So let's start by multiplying matrix A with the vector k. As you know, to multiply matrix by the vector, we start by multiplying each element of the vector by each element of the first row and adding the result. In other words, 1 times 5 plus negative 1 times 9 plus 0 times 1. This gives us negative 4. And that's going to be the first element of the resulting vector. Next, we repeat this with the second row of the matrix. So we're going to multiply each element of the vector by each element of the second row and add the results. So this time we're going to get, well, negative 45 plus 9, negative 36. And finally, to obtain the last element, we're multiplying the factor by the third row of the matrix. So that's 5 minus 9, negative 4. So that's what we got. Well, let's now verify the right-hand side of the equality. So we have to multiply lambda negative 4 by that vector k. To multiply the constant by vector, we simply have to multiply that constant by each element of the vector. And that's how we're going to obtain vector negative 4, negative 4 times 9, negative 36, negative 4. And now it's time to draw the conclusion. As you can see, we got the same result in both cases. This means that this equality from the definition holds true, and that's how we can confirm that lambda equals negative 4 is the eigenvalue for that matrix and vector k, the given vector k, is the corresponding eigenvector. This was not very hard to verify, but of course we're more interested in knowing how to find the eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Let's look again at the equality that we got from the definition. And let's perform a few simple manipulations with it. So we're going to start by collecting all terms on one side, on the left side. Next, we'll do a step that reminds us of a factoring that we perform on algebra. Well, idea is very similar, but as you can see, we now have i right next to lambda. Well, and that is the multiplicative identity matrix. Why do we need it there? Well, because we cannot take matrix A and subtract a number, lambda, right? We can subtract matrices, but not matrix and a number. So that's why we had to multiply lambda by an identity matrix, which acts the same way as the multiplicative identity when we deal with real numbers. And in that case, multiplicative identity is 1. We know when we multiply a number by 1, the number doesn't change. Well, it's the same idea here. So we don't really change the equality. We just wrote it in a form that allows us to perform the subtraction. And now it has lambda times identity matrix. Well, it's a matrix that has lambdas on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now, as you remember, we're trying to find a way to obtain lambda, eigenvalue, and k, eigenvector, for a given matrix. So that means that we can treat those two as unknowns, something that we don't know. And by the way, this is how we can write vector k in general form. And since we don't know neither k1 or k2 or anything up to k sub n, we can treat those as variables. And now this equation all together represents a system of n equations with n unknowns. 
And now, based on our experience solving systems of equations using matrices, we know that there is going to be exist such non-zero vector k that satisfies this equation, if and only if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is equal to zero, and the coefficient matrix is this part. It's written as a difference, but of course we can write it as just one matrix. So this fact is really going to help us to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now to see how exactly this works, let's do an example. So let's try to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the given matrix. Let's call it matrix A. Well, we already know that eigenvalue will be such a number and eigenvector will be such a vector that satisfy the following equation. Let me remind you once again that this product lambda times an identity matrix is a matrix that has the following form. Now, since our matrix is 2 by 2, it makes sense that this product matrix will also be 2 by 2. What are we going to get when we subtract A and lambda i? Well, we get the following matrix. Negative 1 minus lambda. 2 minus 0, so it's just 2. Negative 7 minus 0 is negative 7. And then 8 minus lambda. So what we need to do, we need to find such number lambda and such vector k, which is k1, k2, that satisfies this equation. And we already talked about how this equation is going to have solution only if the determinant of this coefficient matrix equals zero. And that's what we're going to start with. So let's obtain the determinant. I'll have to multiply negative 1 minus lambda by 8 minus lambda and subtract the product of negative 7 and 2. Okay, as I multiply binomials, I get negative 8 plus lambda minus 8 lambda plus lambda squared. And then negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, negative, negative plus 14. So this gives me the quadratic equation lambda squared minus 7 lambda plus 6. And we know that that has to be equal to 0. Now, since we ended up with a quadratic equation, we can easily solve that to find what lambda values satisfy this equation. So we can factor it lambda minus 6 times lambda minus 1 equals 0. From here I get lambda equals 6 and I'm going to call it lambda 1. And then lambda 2, second value of lambda, equals 1. So we were able to find two eigenvalues. And now the question is, what are the corresponding eigenvectors? Well, for each eigenvalue, we're going to get its corresponding eigenvector. So let's start with the first one. Well, if lambda equals 6, and this is how our equation is going to look like. Now we're going to be replacing lambda with 6 and we'll obtain matrix negative 1 minus 6, negative 7, negative 7, 2, and then 8 minus 6, that's 2, times k1, k2, vector k, equals 0. Now there are different ways to solve this equation. We can use row reduction method, or we can rewrite it as a system of two linear equations. I'll go with this method. So from here I get two equations, negative 7, k1 plus 2 k2 equals 0. So once again I got it by multiplying each element from the vector by the first row. And then I'll repeat that with the second row, which will produce exactly the same equation, negative 7 k1 plus 2 k2 equals 0. They both look the same, and what I can get from either one of two is the relation between k1 and k2. So if I take any equation and let's say isolate k2, then I get the following. k2 equals 7 over 2 k1. And that will allow me to write vector k this way. Instead of writing it as k1, k2, I'm going to write like that k1 in its place. And then instead of k2, I'm going to write what it equals to, which is 7 over 2 k1. That's how I can that's how I can write vector k. Well, if I pull out k1, 
then I will get the following. 1, 7 over 2, k1. Well, that's the alternative way of writing this vector. Now, what does this all mean? Well, it actually means the following. We we're trying to find the eigenvector that corresponds to lambda equals 6. And what we found that there are actually infinitely many options of what that eigenvector can be. Because now I can take any value of k I want, and that will produce an eigenvector that corresponds to eigenvalue 6. Well, here I have to make a note that those eigenvectors will be all dependent. So let's pick a value for k1. So let's say let k1 be equal to what number? If we don't want to deal with fractions, let's pick value of k1 that eliminates the fraction 7 over 2. Well, let's k1 be equal to. That means that vector k will have this form. 1 times 2 gives me 2, and then 7 over 2 times 2 gives me 7. 2, 7. So what we have so far, we found an eigenvalue, 6, and the corresponding eigenvector, 2, 7. And how can you check if you got the right answer? You can take the eigenvalue and eigenvector that you found and see if they satisfied and see if they satisfy this equation from the definition. Now let's find the corresponding eigenvector for the eigenvalue 1. This is how our equation is going to look like if we plug in 1 for lambda in the original equation. So from here, the, the system of equations I'll get will be negative 2k1 plus 2k2 equals 0, and then negative 7k1 plus 7 k2 equals 0. I can take either one of those equations and obtain the following. k2 equals k1. Well, that means that the vector will be k1 on its place, and instead of k2, I'm going to plug in what it equals to, which is k1. And that is the same as vector 1, 1 times k1. And the story is the same. We can let k1 be equal any real number to obtain one of infinitely many eigenvectors that corresponds to lambda equals 1. And let me remind you again that those eigenvectors will be all dependent. Since we don't need to get rid of any fractions here, let's just use the easiest number we can think of, which is 1. Remember, I cannot use 0 because vector k should be non-zero. And if k1 equals 1, that means that vector k is 1, 1. So the eigenvalue of 1 has the corresponding eigenvector 1, 1. And while I said that different values of k1 produce different dependent corresponding eigenvectors, well, any eigenvector that we find for eigenvalue 1 is going to be independent from the eigenvector that we find for eigenvalue 6. So those eigenvectors are independent. So these are the steps for finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the given matrix.